Uh. Mm. Mm. Uh-uh. 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 Internet. What's going on? Robert T. Garden here with a new series. I think I'm calling How I Shot This, where I break down ways in which I have created specific shots. A couple of you have asked about this, so uh, I'm gonna give this series a shot. No pun intended. Let's see what we get. Welcome back guys, Robert Teagarden here again with this new series like I talked about. Uh, before I get started, if you haven't already, I would love if you would subscribe to the channel. Posting content on filmmaking and the business of being a creative on a weekly basis. So if you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for posty notifications. How I shot this, this particular shot right here, a couple of people asked, how did I create this particular shot? What the lighting was? What gear did I use? And so this is what we're gonna break down right now. So the first thing I wanna do with this series is talk about the gear I used to create this particular shot. And probably the most important piece is this little dolly table right here. It's a motorized table. Um, plug it into the wall and you click the button and the thing spins around. Uh, this thing was reasonably cheap. I think it was around, you know, 25, 30, 40 something dollars. It was definitely under 50 bucks. Uh, put an Amazon link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. It helps the channel just so you know. Uh, but that is kind of the key piece to this. This allows the product to spin without me having to touch it, which is key. So definitely invest in one of these if you haven't already. The other thing that I used for this shot is the Rokinon 100 mil macro lens. I did a whole video on this. If you haven't checked it out, it'll be somewhere up here. Definitely peep on this lens. Um, it's one of my favorite things that I have in my kit and it definitely helps create the, uh, the looks that you're seeing on this particular one right there. So that's that. The next one are these aerosol atmosphere cans. This is basically like a fog machine in an aerosol can. And so I spray this to kind of create that atmosphere. It definitely kind of adds to the drama that's there and it helps you do things like that um, it, it outside of post. Um, I like doing it this way. You can definitely add fog in post, but this creates a little bit more natural look. Um, I'll link to these in the description as well. Um, amazing little tools and definitely a level up kind of unlock code on uh, how to make these shots. So that's the other one there. Lighting, for this particular one, I usually have some sort of top-down lighting section that's going on when I shoot product. Uh, but this one I didn't, and that was on purpose. So uh, let's kind of break down exactly how I did the lighting in this one. It's fairly simple. Used a Bowling P1, two Pavo tubes, and then the, uh, the newer CN160 little kit lights. Let's see exactly what it looked like. So the setup that I have here is fairly simple. Um, I have the the spinner right there. It's a little spinner thing. And then this little sideline is a Boeing P1, Bowling P1. And that's throwing that red hue onto uh, that piece that we're shooting right now. Uh, the red hue is actually the company color. So it's not just some RGB like thing that I thought looked cool. It actually plays into uh, this particular company itself. Behind that, behind the, the spinner, is another one of these Pavo tube, uh, the kind of 10 inch Pavo tubes that I have. So that's throwing light behind onto that piece of foam core. That puts some separation between the piece that we're shooting and the backdrop. And then the other, um, Pavo tube that I have here is on a stand and that's casting a kicker kind of side lighting it on this side Now typically when I do product shoots I have some sort of overhead lighting that's going on but because I want this lighting to be super moody and dark um, I don't have any overheads it's all side light and kind of backlighting of what's going on so that's how this one shot. So there you go guys, like I said, this newer CN160, these uh, Nanlite Pavo tubes, which I've also done a video on. I absolutely love these things. I use them all of the time. Um, and then the Bowling P1, which is the only reason I don't have it is because it's throwing a little red hue on that wall behind me right there. Um, I'll link to all these in the description below. You guys can check those things out, but fairly simple lighting setup, um, but just getting that thing to spin around and kind of see exactly the different details of the product that I'm shooting in and of itself. But the real fun part of this shoot and how I got kind of what I feel is the more dramatic look to these things, really inspired by car commercials in and of themselves, is this 
technique called light painting. Um, and really light painting is just a fun kind of descriptive way of saying like, I'm just moving the light around the source to catch off different curves and contours that exist from that product in and of itself. So here's a shot of me actually shooting these things. And I used either a Pavo tube or the CN160 to be able to create that. And really I just wanna start from a state of complete darkness and then whip the light around in the section that I want to highlight. Now really the things I wanted to highlight here were not only the contours of the part itself, which is machined in-house for that company, but also the stamping of their logo as well. Those two things are really what I was trying to time the tabletop to turn around for. And you kind of have to watch a little bit in your monitor, kind of cheat, give yourself a little bit of light, then kill the light all the way backwards and then whip it down right around the time that you want to have the light paint over the subject that you're shooting. Now, the thing that you can kind of play around with is the speed in which you pull the light off of the subject as well. So if I want it to just be a very quick hit, I'll keep a nice fluid, fast motion going down. But a lot of the times what I want to do is kind of sit and let that light hang out a little bit and then whip it down. So you'll see in some of these shots that I'll kind of whip it through, hold the light on the subject and then pull it off just at the last second. And the reason that I do that is, I mean, it's pretty simple. I, I just kind of want to accentuate and hold on that particular shot for as long as I feel necessary. So that's really what I end up doing um, is just kind of timing the amount of light that I spill onto the subject uh, and then do that kind of to, for the desired amount of time. So the last thing you need to do in order to really sell this light leak happens in post. As you can see, as I'm just going through, there's still a ton of light that's spilling into my frame because as you saw, as I was making this thing happen, I, I don't have a completely dark room. You could still kind of see me as I was filling this thing in, but that's an easy problem to fix. Um, you really just can handle it via opacity keyframes. So this is where my light starts to truly spill in, where I painted the light you can see right here. I'm gonna add a keyframe here by hitting Control or Command on a Mac and clicking in. And then I'm just gonna drag this all the way down, drag my opacity all the way down to zero. So now you have true black, it comes in this way. And then when I'm done spilling the light in, right about here is where I'm going to add two additional keyframes at the end. And I'm gonna pull the end down to black as well. So if I play it through, I get complete darkness, light spilling in, light coming out. And then I can even get a little more fancy if I zoom in, I can right click and start to add a Bezier handle here and really even further start to customize how fast that light and at what degree that light is going to be cut out and go into black. I'm going to do the same thing on the front end of it, right click, add a Bezier, kind of more aggressive with that curve so that it swoops in, whoosh, swoops out. Then all that's left is to add your color correction and you're good to go. So that's the first edition of how I shot this. If you liked the video, please like the damn video. If you haven't already and you dug what you saw, consider subscribing, ring the bell for post <gasps> notifications. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is Robert T. Garden with another video in the can. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.